This is Mr. Morris, and today we're going to learn about the various menus and buttons on your calculator. Some of which you already know, but um, some of this will be new as well. All right, I always start on the home screen, and um, I'm going to go ahead and take the cubed root of 27. The cubed root is located under the math menu, so I'm going to hit the math button. You'll notice right away what's nice about this program I have, which you don't have in your calculator, but it shows a key press history. So every button I press, you can see here, and as I press it, so this will keep a history, so if you lose track of where we are, you can always look back at this. So I hit the math menu, and number four is the cubed root. The quickest way to do this is just to hit four. And the cubed root automatically goes to your home screen. And then I hit 27. And I always want to close parentheses, so there is the close parentheses, and hit enter. And it gives me the answer, which is three. All right, now uh, I'll try to remember to clear the key press history every time we start a new problem so there's not too much up there. Now the next thing I want to do is the fifth root of 32. Now we have to think ahead a little bit. This number right here, the 5, is called the index of the radical. All right, um, so that number in the little corner we have to type in first. So because we want the fifth root of 32. So then we're going to go back to math. And the fifth thing has a little X, and that's really how we take the root with any index. So whether it's the fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, we're going to use that. And so this is actually the fifth root, but I've already typed in the five. So then I hit five, and it's the fifth root of 32, and it looks like that. So this number right here takes care of what number goes into that corner. And then so I hit enter, and it gives me the answer, which is... The last quick problem I want to do is absolute value. Now, absolute value is covered back in chapter one, but it's easy to forget where these things are. So this one, I'm going to clear the history. I'm going to hit math. And instead of it being directly in this menu, I have to move over to where it says number, which kind of makes sense. So it's math, then number. And then I've got to go to number one, which is absolute value. And so this arrow right here shows that you moved over in that menu. And then instead of bars, it actually uses parentheses. So then I will type in the negative 11, close parentheses again, and hit enter. And so that is equal to 11. The next thing I want to go over is graphing in your Y equals screen, your table screen, um, a little bit about uh, zoom and table setup. So we're going to graph the equation y equals negative x plus 7. And I've already cleared my home screen. Um, let me clear my uh, key press history. What I will do uh, first is hit y equals. And then you'll see that um, you have your y equals screen. Now, this is real important that all of these plots up here are not highlighted. Those are stat plots. And uh, make sure they are off, which mine are now. All right, so we're going to type in negative x plus 7. So negative. The x key is right here. It's It really serves a lot of different keys depending on the mode of your calculator. But for us, we're in function mode. So negative x plus 7. Um, and real quick, if you're not in function mode, a key that I'll hit real quick just to verify the mode key. So the mode key um, shows you right here that we are in function mode. And for now, really, everything on the left should be highlighted. Um, you don't really have to worry about setting the clock. I never really do. Um, so uh, if you have everything on the left highlighted, you're in good shape. So now I'm going to go back to y equals. And um, now that we have negative x plus 7 typed in, I can go ahead and hit graph. But before I do that, if I'm not really sure what my window looks like, I always like to hit zoom. And then standard, which is number 6. Now, standard is just the negative 10 by 10 window for both your x coordinates and your y coordinates. So most things we try, we try in the standard window. 
All right, now you can see that this is a graph of a line, which we should expect. It's really in MX plus B form. And it's got a negative slope, so it goes downhill. It looks like our y-intercept is 7, so it looks like we type things in right. One of the reasons why we study graphs so much is it's really important to know the shape of them. Uh, so if you type it in your calculator, you make sure that it's typed in right based on your knowledge of the graph. So things you should expect to happen should happen. All right. Now, um, I have this, uh, let's go ahead and actually look at what the window screen looks like. We don't really have to adjust it here, but if you go to the window screen, it has negative 10, x min, x max is 10, x scale is 1, I generally don't uh, change that. Y min and max are both negative 10 and 10. Again, I generally don't change the Y scale or X res. Right? If we need to adjust our window, which I'll do in a little bit, uh, we can simply just scroll down to these different numbers and change them. The big thing in this window is your minimum better be less than your maximum or you get an error uh, for your window. All right. So now I'm going to go to second window, which is the table set menu. Oh, I didn't hit it hard enough. And yours may look differently than mine. And so what we'll do is mine has a table start at negative 9. I'm going to change that to 0. All right. What that does is it simply tells, you know, it's really a T-chart or an XY table that you would make by hand just to send your calculator. And a lot of you have seen this before. All right. So it just tells it to start counting at 0. Delta table, that's that delta again, the little triangle, equals 1. It's just going to count by 1. So it'll go 0, 1, 2, 3 for the independent variable. And then it'll calculate the dependent variable by plugging into our equation over here. All right? And these are both in auto, auto. I'll shift that to something different in a second. So now that we have our table set up, and usually you don't have to mess with this too much um, unless you have... Uh, uh, extreme values that are larger that you want to look at. Now I'm going to go to second graph, which is the actual table. And all of our tables then, if we adjusted our table setup, should look like this. All right. Now, 0, 7 is what happens when I plug 0 in, I get 7 out. So really, this table is doing all the substitutions for us for every single value of x. All right. This next problem here, number 5, says f of x equals negative x plus 7. All I really did from 4 to 5 is switch notation. Right? So I switched from y equals to function notation. So I'm telling you that negative x plus 7 is a function by doing so. And then I said, hey, let's find f of negative 2. Well, this is function notation, which I know a lot of us struggle with. But all that really means is take negative 2 and put it in for x and find that value. Now, if we do this by hand real quick, we can just look at it without really writing it down. If I plug negative 2 in for x, I get a negative times a negative 2, which becomes positive 2. So this should equal 9. So I'm just going to write this down. And so I'll actually go ahead and show the work here. If I plug in the negative, I have negative and then a negative 2 plus 7. And so that equals 9. Now, that wasn't too tough, but we can have our calculator verify that. If I just scroll up a little bit, and there's negative 2, and then I can see that the output is 9. Now, another way to have our calculator do this um, is what's called the ask function in the table set. So I'm going to go to second window again. And actually, let me let me clear the history here. It's getting uh, to have a lot of stuff in it. I'm going to hit second and then graph. Uh, actually, I meant to hit second table set, which is window. So second window. And I want to go ahead and have my calculator uh, calculate these values uh, without scrolling in the table. So I'm going to take independent and I'm going to scroll and change that from auto to ask. So use your arrow or keypad and highlight the ask and hit enter. And now it's highlighted. And then I'm going to go back to second graph, which is my table. Now, when I go to second graph, I have my table and it's blank. 
So now what this allows me to do is type in any x values I want, and it'll give me the y values just for those x values. So if I did type in negative 2, hit enter, it give me 9. And so that's a nice way to use the table if, let's say you wanted to create a t-chart, but you're not um, using sequential numbers, and you don't want to really adjust your table setup, you can just put in ask and just type in a few numbers. Okay, I want to reset our table so it's back to auto auto. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I've clean, uh, cleared my screen and key press history. The first thing I want to do is go to second window, and that's back into the table setup menu. And um, mine's already done, but a second ago we were in this mode ask go ahead and slide it back over to auto and hit enter and that'll allow us to be in the I would say standard table setup mode now the last problem I'm going to do today is I'm going to solve this equation 5x plus 10 equals 30 using our calculator all right so I'm going to go to y equals and I just chose to put 5x plus 10 and y1 so I'm going to type in 5. Actually, let me go back here real quick and clear the pre uh, key press history. And then we'll go ahead and start over and type in 5x plus 10. Oh, for some reason, the plus key is not working. So 5x plus, there it goes, 10. And then I'm going to hit enter. And in y2, I'm going to plug in y equals 30. Now, what's going to happen here is I'm going to be able to graph both these equations on the screen. So this is the equation of one line. This is the equation of the other. The solution to this problem is the x value at which they intersect. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit graph. And I remember from before I'm in Zoom Standard, but it looks like maybe I have a mistake here. I have only one line, and I should have two. But the real problem is I typed everything incorrectly. It's just 30 is outside of my window. And so here's where you have to go to your window. So I'm going to hit the Window button. And these sides of the equations, the left and the right, represent y values. So I have to make sure my y max is bigger than 30. So I'm going to scroll down and make this, I'll just make it 40. You don't want to make it right on 30, otherwise it'll be right at the top of your window. And then hit graph. So now I can see the equations of both lines. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is find the intersection of these two lines. The x value will be the solution to this equation. Because when I plug in an x and get out the same y, then they are equivalent expressions on the left and the right. So the answer is really the x value. So I'm going to go to second. Now this is another menu we're going to use a lot uh, during this year. The trace button, which is calculate. All right, now there's a lot of things in here. We're going to find number five, which is the intersection. Now you'll see what happens on your screen. You'll get a cursor right here. Now your cursor is in a good spot. The intersection we can tell is right here. So you don't have to move your cursor unless you have more than one intersection that you have to get near. So really, I'm going to hit Enter. And then you'll see the cursor moves up to the other curve or graph. And then I'm going to hit enter and we don't really have to guess and so I will hit enter again and that's the intersection now notice the answer is really x equals 4 whereas the y value is 30 which we should expect so the answer to this is x equals 4 now you can see the cursor goes to the intersection point of the two graphs 
And if you really want to verify this, if I plug 4 in here, 4 times 5 is 20, plus 10 is 30, and 30 equals 30. That's why you see that Y value of 30. All right, that'll uh, wrap it up for today. We're going to learn more about the calculator the next time we meet in class. Thank you.